So the meta is constantly shifting with newer brawlers rising and becoming the best of the best. This video features the top 5 best brawlers to be playing right now, so without further ado, let's begin. Let's start off with the 5th best brawler and that is Daryl. Even though he got a small nerf, it didn't really impact him. However, still, the fact that he has two supers is game changing. Even from far distances, he is still able to use his supers and get up to the brawler easily. Use his supers strategically as well, as he can even make plays by supering on you from a random place when you least expect it. When he uses his tar barrel gadget especially, it creates a slowing zone around him, so if you're caught in it, bye bye to you. The effect of that slowing zone is that it makes it much harder to escape Daryl, even if you do manage to escape, you may be damaged a lot. Next up we have Surge. Surge has still maintained a good spot in the meta and has gone a bit higher because of brawler nerfs. Surge is and always has been a versatile brawler. He's fantastic when it comes to facing tanks and throwers because regarding tanks, he can use a super to knock them back and escape from them. Whereas with throwers, if they're hiding behind walls especially, he can use his super to leap over the walls and annihilate them. A key feature as to why Surge is good is because of his hypercharge. When he activates it, Surge now has a fifth stage and his attacks split and have increased range no matter what. This can be really good for securing kills at long range points and increases your chances of hitting brawlers, hence why he is broken. Next up we have Gale. Gale is the brawler you need and he's versatile all around. He is especially good when it comes to countering tanks or really powerful brawlers. By using his super in many ways, combined with his twister gadget and his star powers for better defense. Regarding his star powers, it depends on the type of map. For his freezing snow star power, use it in more open maps so it prohibits enemies from pushing up and with his blustery blow star power, use it in maps that have a good amount of walls since there will be places that Gale can stun them at, which effectively works in his favor. Also a good thing about him is his hypercharge. When he activates it, Gale's super is 2.5 tiles wider and creates two gusts of wind and snow, which pushes enemies further away than usual. This is an absolute game changer and can really help you in many scenarios, whether it's in a really close situation where the enemy is about to win, or it's just there to give you a free advantage and take the win. Next up we have Kenji. Kenji was extremely broken on release, however it didn't take him too long before he got nerfed. He got a nerf to his Hosomaki healing gadget, where the healing was reduced from 75% to 50%. This did impact him and caused him to fall off a tiny bit. Regardless, Kenji is still broken, mainly because of his super trait and the different ways he can heal. With his super, he slices in an X formation with two slices on each end. Keep in mind that you have to aim this well to get good value out of it, because it does deal a lot of damage. It is also important to master his main attack as he attacks with two different styles, a dash and a slash. With his trait, Kenji heals from any target he hits, so that can be opponents, turrets, heist safe, whatever you can name. So the more targets you hit, the more healing you receive, which is good for you. The more enemies you also hit with your super, the quicker you charge your super back. And you can easily charge his super up again if you hit enough targets with it, so keep that in mind. Last but not least, the best brawler as of right now is Mo. Mo is an interesting brawler with a versatile kit that can be quite powerful but requires precision and timing to fully leverage. His main attack is tricky to master due to the way it deals damage. His main attack involves throwing a stone that then breaks into four smaller rocks mid-air in a cross pattern. On impact, the smaller rocks break into even smaller rocks, allowing for multiple hits. However, this attack is highly inconsistent because if Mo's rocks hit an enemy directly at point blank range, it can deal massive damage as more rocks hit the target. This makes him lethal up close. 
From mid-range, the attack is harder to aim and you need to time it so that the rocks explode just right to maximize damage. And at long range, his attack often deals less damage as fewer rocks connect with the enemy. His drill super is good because Mo can cover a lot of ground quickly, allowing him to get up close to enemies. At the end of his super, Mo knocks back enemies as well. Mo is immune to most forms of damage when drilling underground. This not only makes him great for bypassing obstacles and dodging key abilities, but also makes his super an incredible repositioning tool. When it comes to his star power, go with skipping stones. This star power makes Mo's basic attack bounce one more time, which means more damage and higher area control. It can make a huge difference in specific maps where bouncing rocks off walls lets Mo zone out enemies. With the right angle, Mo can deal substantial damage by making his rocks ricochet in unpredictable patterns, making the star power especially strong for wall picking tactics. All right, everyone, so that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know down below in the comments if this was a valid tier list, but if not, share your opinions on brawlers that could have made it and why I will consider them as well. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, join the Discord server, follow all of my socials, and I'm gonna be doing a giveaway in a month's time. So be tuned for that. Thank you, everyone, and see you guys later. Peace out. I've become so